It's April 23rd, 1997. I'm on my third day of boot camp in South Carolina. I just joined the U.S. Army. I'm around people I have no clue about. I know nobody. I just got into my third fight in three days in the laundry room. And it was one of those fights where both of us are blood. You know, we are blood. It's terrible. It's a very bad fight. It was his first fight. It was my third fight. My drill sergeants pull me in. And there's five of them sitting there. I'm on this side. And they said, son, we just want to tell you something. Military is not for you. You need to go back home. I said, what are you telling me? He says, you don't need to be in the military. Do you even want to be here? You do not want to be here. I'm 17, 18 years old. And I'm quiet. I'm not saying anything. They said, look, here's what we're going to do to you. Typically, when this happens, this is your third fight in three days, we absolutely do a dishonorable discharge, and we send you home. Here's what we want you to do. You have tonight to think about your decision, okay? We think you're not made for the military. We want you to go and make as many calls as you want. Tomorrow morning at 5 a.m., you need to tell us if you're staying in or you're going home. Our suggestion to you is you need to go home, son. That's what you need to do. This is not for everybody, and it's definitely not for you. So I go to my room. And I start making all the calls. They give me a room with a phone. I start calling all my buddies. Every one of my friends, girlfriends, everybody is saying, Pat, come home. Pat, come home. Pat, come home. Every single person says, Pat, come home. I was fun. I was the guy you wanted to go out with. I was that guy. And I go to my bunk. And I had a friend of mine, Wiggins. Never forget Wiggins. He was from Texas at that time. And I had three songs I was listening to on repeat. Okay, back then it was Walkman. So I'm listening to my Walkman. And for the entire night, I didn't sleep that night. I listened to three songs. And all I thought about it, I kept thinking about this decision. One song was um, Usher, You Make Me Wanna. It had just come out. The other song was by Blackstreet. Look how vi I vividly remember these albums and these songs I'm listening to. It was Blackstreet. The song was uh, um, Don't Leave Me Girl. Don't leave me, girl, please stay with me tonight. And the third song was by Brian McKnight. Um, I think it was, I don't know the name of the song. It's, uh, until I feel your heartbeat pounding next to mine, I've got a work to do till every single star up in the sky knows that I belong to you, those three songs, all night. That's all I listened to. And I was very emotional. It was a defining moment in my life. I wanted to go back and party. I'm at the prime time of my life and partying, 17, 18. Uh, I didn't tell my dad, I didn't tell my family. I woke up in the morning, I went to the sergeants, and I said, I'm staying in. I'm gonna make this work. And let me tell you what happened. A part of it was, now that they know I'm in, all they thought about was find ways to break me, make sure I got out of the army. They made me do more push-ups. One day I was doing so push-ups, it was like our fourth day. I couldn't salute. Like I literally had to go like this to salute. I couldn't salute. My shoulders were gone. They were wiped out. My legs, I'd lost 24 pounds in two weeks because we kept running and running. But David, four more miles. But David, four more miles. And I can't stand running. Why am I telling you these stories? Um... Everybody wants to be a decamillionaire. Everybody says, Pat, how's it feel now having all these millions of dollars and everybody around the world knows you and that, that, all this stuff that they say. Yeah, that's great. You take the military out, I'm not who I am today. For everybody, it's different. I'm here with 144 other entrepreneurs. I'm in Harvard, obviously, right now at Harvard Business School, OPM program. And everyone I talk to, they typically have a one year, two year of extreme hardship in their lives that they had to go through. For me, it was the military. Obviously, I lived in Iran, lots of hardship. I went through war, lots of hardship. I lived at a refugee camp, lots of hardship. Parents, divorce, streets, all that, lots of hardship. Military, lots of hardship. And then it built me into the man that I am. I was at 21, and from there, the rest was figuring out my way and what I wanted to do in my life. So I learned 19 things from the military that helped me become a millionaire. And I want to tell you about it today. And we can replace millionaire with decamillionaire, with entrepreneur, with CEO, whatever you want to call it. The title, for the sake of the title, we use the title millionaire because somebody asked me, Pat, I want to be a millionaire. I'm thinking about joining the military, dot, dot, dot. And I think the kid's name, Mario, what was the kid's name? Dre, the, uh, Dre what? From the Bay. 
Dre from the Bay. Uh, Dre, I'm going to give you some love because this whole uh, message was prompted by you. Dre said, hey, Pat, I'm currently in high school. I'm planning on taking a year off after I graduate serving the military, learn discipline and work ethic for my future career. Can you please make a video on your experience in the military? Maybe, you know, some advice on points that follow. So let me get right into it. I learned 19 things, 19 things that military helped me with. And I'm gonna get right into it and I'll go through them fairly quickly. Number one, managing chaos. Military was all about managing chaos. Everything's happening at the same time. You had to find a way to be poised and we saw people that couldn't handle it. I remember one of the exercises that we had right before you become a, a graduate is you have to low crawl under these wires while above you Semi-automatic semi weapons are shooting right above you. Da, 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 and that's all you're hearing. It's late night. It's raining. It's heat. It's humid. It's terrible. And you're low crawling with this noise. That's chaos. You're panicking. You've never been through that before. What do I do? There was a kid on the base. That same day, there was a kid on the base that had to do this. He couldn't handle it. He stood up. Boom. Done deal. Okay? That's kind of like in business. You have all these, you feel like there's so many chaos in business, you don't know how to handle it. All of a sudden, you make one mistake in business, one stupid mistake, you lose your entire business because you don't know how to manage chaos. So one thing I learned from the military, number two is mission-driven. Military is all about mission. We have a mission, and here's what we have to accomplish. Let's go at the mission. Entrepreneurship, if you can figure out a way to make your business or the money part, you want to be a millionaire, you want to be a successful CEO and entrepreneur, mission-driven. What is your mission? you got to go complete this mission. You cannot leave a mission as, ah, oh, whatever, we'll try, oh, we'll run. No. Mission driven, let's complete this mission. What is the mission? Let's go complete this mission. That's exactly how the military is. That's exactly how it is with business as well. Number three, learning how to get a lot done with limited resources. You know, a lot of times people will say, well, Pat, I wish I had money. I don't know a lot of entrepreneurs that started off with 10 million bucks and somebody gave them the money unless if it was their parents. I wasn't one of them. I'm not coming from a family that's very wealthy. My mother had to go back to Iran because she ran out of money and my dad was a cashier at a 99 cent store. You know, both of them were uh, uh, good people. My dad was the hardest working person I know, but we didn't have any money. So I started off my business by making sales, $100 commission, $200 commission, $500 commission, $1,000 commission, and I saved, right? And then I was able to open up my own office, then I was able to hire staff, assistant, all this other stuff. But in the military, you got to learn how to make things work on limited resources. Like, think about it. We go to the field, and you're going to whatever is going on. There's a mission, there's a war, there's something going on. And you're living in the Humvee or you have the, uh, 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 you know, you have a little bit amount of water and you have a little bit amount of food and you have a couple uh, uh, are, you know, food that you're eating. And how long is this going to last? And we got to make sure our rations are going to be lower. And this you got and the same thing goes with business. Sometimes you got to work with limited amount of resources that you have. Number four is learning how to multitask. I know a lot of times there's a lot of people that talk about multitasking is not a possible thing to do. The Power of Habit, which is a great book. It's one of my favorite books of all time that I've read for business. But I'm here to tell you, I hate to say it, there's multitasking in the military. You can't just say this. All I'm doing is standing here on guard and I'm just watching over there. Really? While you're doing this, you're speaking to somebody and you're waving people while you're looking over there and you're going like this or like that. And you have to go lower and you have to position yourself and you have to drink some water to stay hydrated. That's multitasking. Business is the same thing. You may be doing something here. Why you got to do this over here? Why you're handling this over here? How do you do that? Why well, I don't know how to multitask. I'm sorry. In the world of business, there's going to be many instances that you have to somewhat learn to multitask, especially during the survival phase, until you can get a ton of support and match up the areas you're not good with with support team. Hire staff. Hire support team. Hire team. And then you're able to do what you're very good at. But during the survival phase, you're going to be multitasking quite a lot as you're building your business. I learned that in the military. Number five, learning how to perform under pressure. I think sometimes people are afraid to perform under pressure. And more importantly, let me say this to you. You'll learn a lot from anybody on how they perform under pressure. Now, keep this in mind. Let me say this and stay with me. I'm going to say it slowly. Nobody performs better under pressure than they do when there is no pressure. Let me explain. Robert Ory was known as a great three-point shooter. He won seven championships, right? Great. When do you think he shoots better threes? In practice, without anybody looking at him, and there's nobody guarding him, or in the game with three seconds left on the shot clock? Of course, practice. However, here's the difference. There are people 
that perform better under pressure than other people perform under pressure. They're both under pressure. One outperforms the other one. I can tell you in the world of business, you got to learn how to perform under pressure better. When you're in war, when you're military, when you're a soldier, you'll learn how to perform under pressure. The same thing goes with sports. Some of you have played sports, organized sports, and you know how it is when it's last minute and your coach is telling you, you got to do this, we're counting on you and all this stuff. Some people can't handle being counted on. We're counting on you. This is it. you got to make this last place. Oh, my God. Everybody's counting. What if I don't do it? I'm going to be a loser. You see, that's when you learn about somebody when they have to perform under pressure. And that's when the leader is born during moments like that. I'm a byproduct of that 17, 18-year-old kid. I would, I would give anything to have a camera watching myself at that 17, 18-year-old guy when the five drill sergeants gave me the option to come back home and party and said, you are not worth staying in the military. I'd love to see that. This 37-year-old version PBD is built because of that 17, 18-year-old version PBD made a decision during pressure time. Just like you're going to need to make some decisions during pressure time. And while most people give up during those pressure type situations, you're not. You're going to stick through. And it's going to be difficult, but you're going to stick through. If you do, obviously, that's where the payoff comes. Number six, military taught me about how to manage risk. Everything's about managing risk. Uh, what is managing risk? If we flank left, we have a risk here because the enemy is on the other side and we have to figure out what they're going to be doing. If we, we go this way, we're looking at mountains. We're going to need to climb. So we may get over the mountains, but we're going to be tired. So which risk is more important? If we go straight, we don't really know what's going on if it's straight. So if enemies on both sides, we're going to be in right in the middle, and that's ambush time. We're done, no matter how we flank and however we uh, go through it. We're done deal. So what do we want to stay here? The risk if we stay here is they attack us. What if we retreat? If we retreat, then they're going to be knowing that we're afraid. You have four choices, five choices, left, straight, right, stay, retreat. Do I send somebody? There is risk. The same thing with business. Do I go here? Do I go here? Do, what do I do here? You're managing risk as a business owner. And to create wealth, it's all about managing risk. Now, keep in mind, I want you to understand this part. Everything I'm telling you, you're seeing the final product. So you're saying, oh, my God, Patrick speaks, and I feel like he, this is the final product of me having to go through those types of situations, just like you're going to need to go through those types of situations. Point number seven. Let me go through point number seven. Thick skin. And I'll tell you what part of military taught me thick skin. Uh, oh my gosh, the military is sarcastic. I mean, everybody. I was in a motor pool, which means I was a Hummer mechanic. If you're in a motor pool, some of the most sarcastic people in the military work in a motor pool. We're under the Humvee, and we're, I was working on 16 Hummers that were assigned to me, and then I had five LMTVs and FMTVs. And I was a Hemet driver, these massive Hemet drivers that we would go, which was fascinating. That's what I worked on. Those were assigned to me. So mechanics are out there just saying the most random things to each other. When I was in boot camp, can you imagine your drill sergeant saying the following thing to you? Hey, boy. Hey, boy. You got a girl home? You got a girl at home? I do. You know who she's with right now? Who? Your best friend. Your best friend right now. She's moaning right now his name. Your girlfriend. And you have access to no phone for two months. Figure that one out. <laughs> you think like you're mentally off for two months? That's what they're telling you. And they're writing you letters. And your letters, you get a chance to write on Sundays to send them out. Can you handle that? That's the thick skin part. So let's take that and let's talk about business. Oh my gosh, somebody said, I'm not interested in your product. Someone quits. Are you kidding me? That's thick skin. Sensitivity. This person screamed at me. This person hung up on me. This person closed the door on me. This person said this behind my back. This person bought the product, then they canceled, and then they told everybody I'm terrible. Thick skin. Thick skin. You need thick skin. Military teaches a lot of thick skin, and you need thick skin to be a millionaire. Uh, number eight, tribe. We learn how to have a tribe. Everything for me was about camaraderie. Uh, my boy Bradford, McElroy, Felix... Uh, there's a long list of these names, Chip, Klingerman. These were brothers of mine. I mean, I'm talking brothers of mine is what they were. And we had amazing camaraderie. We had amazing camaraderie together. Amazing. I'm talking we had a tribe that we'd go out and everybody backed everybody up. Let me explain to you what I mean by this. It is an element of gang type of a thing in the military. You become a gang. I was part of the 326 engineers at the 101st Airborne Division Air Assault. I was part of HHC. 
and our crew, me and Bradford, my buddy. If anybody said, like Bradford, one day Bradford and I come, uh, come back uh, uh, at the chow hall, and uh, we're sitting there, and we were so competitive. Who could do more push-ups? I would do beat him in push-ups. Who could run better? He was a much better runner than I. Who can do more sit-ups? Who was a better wrestler? He was a phenomenal wrestler is what Bradford was. Um, love, lo our relation, we were, br if, you, if, we bl if we bled, we were, you would think we're related to each other, right? One day we got into it, and I said, Bradford, let's go to, uh, uh, what do you call it, the racket uh, uh, ball court. We went to East Step. East Step was a gym. And we went in there, and then I said, you ready? Yeah, ready. Two girls were playing racquetball. I said, you guys mind if we use a racquetball for about 10, 15 minutes? I said, sure. I said, Bradford, you're upset at me? Yeah, I'm upset at you. Let's take it out on each other and see what we can do. I had no problem. Ready? Go. Boom. We started. Started with pushing, then wrestling, then swinging, then punching, then bleeding then hugging, then leaving, then some other people made fun of us, and then fighting them. That's the tribe. Now, I'm not telling you to go start fights with everybody. I'm not endorsing that. I'm 18 years old at that time, and there's a very high level of knuckleheadness in that. Okay, I'm not endorsing any of that right now to you. The point I'm trying to make to you is we learn how to create a tribe. In the world of business, when you build a business, this is my suggestion. There's many ways you could do it. For me, I love a team that is committed to one another, that's willing to work their tails off to make sure the mission becomes a reality. And if there's a tribe component to it, it is more important for everybody to be able to count on one another. You learn that in the military. I learned that in the military. Again, a part of that you learn in sports as well. Next is leadership. You learn how to lead uh, very, very quickly. You have no choice but to lead because everything in the military is leadership. So you're either going to lead, follow, or get out of the way. You've heard that many times. But there was a development process to it. So the whole get out of the way part, it's a saying you say get out of the way, but at the same time, you're developing the people. I was being developed. I was developing other people. People were being developed. We were all being developed in the military. There was a leadership development component in the military that was constantly taking place. Leadership. Next is learning other cultures. And let me add something on the leadership side. A lot of times people have somebody in the company that they say, oh, you know, I just don't like this person. Boom, boom. They're gone. But there's no leadership development. Now, um, keep in mind, there are certain people that don't fit the culture. If somebody doesn't fit the culture, it was a wrong hiring process. Or the person that was getting the job lied during the hiring process and they were BSing you a lot. And many people will do that. Let's take that part out. Let's say that doesn't exist. Everything was right and you hired properly and they said everything properly. Great. And they have a few things that they need to do, but they fit the culture very well. It's on you to lead them and develop them. You can't just give up on people and say, screw it, you know what, you're fired next. That's leadership development. That's the same exact way it is on military. We don't give up on our peers. We develop them, right? Next, uh, learning other cultures, learning other cultures. I had to learn how to deal with folks from Mississippi who were Caucasian. I had to learn how to deal with Mississippi folks who were African American. I had to learn how to deal with folks who were from North Dakota, certain faith I've never heard before. I had to learn how to deal with people from Utah. I had to learn how to deal with people from uh, New York who were Puerto Rican. I had to learn how to deal with different gangs. And the military tracks a lot of former gang members. I had to learn how to deal with, you know, people that looked at me and they say, wait a minute. Now, keep in mind my look and I'm shaved and I'm Middle Eastern. Where, where are you from? You're from Iran. You know, misconceptions. I had to learn how to deal with misconceptions. You're from Iran. You're Middle Eastern. So what? Why are you in the U.S. Army? Misconceptions. I had to learn how to deal with those ethnicities and nationalities. In the world of business... You know, my company looks like the United Nations. We have every single nationality out of our 2,400 agents. You name a nationality, we pretty much have. We have all the different faith. We have all the different, you know, backgrounds. What are we going to do? Say, no, we only work with this type? No. I want to be able to work with everybody. Military taught that part to me in a tremendous way. Next, uh, adapting. N uh, next point is adapting. You're learning how to adapt to the situation that you have. And adapting, sometimes you have a long time to adapt. Sometimes you don't have a long time to adapt. You got to learn how to do both. In the world of business, you want to become a millionaire? Market changes. What do you need to do? Oh my gosh, did you see what happened to the market tank? Adapt. Oh my gosh, we have a new president. This is so scary. What are we going to do? This man is the worst man of all time. This woman is the worst. What? Adapt. Oh my goodness, did you see what just happened to the stock market? Adapt. Just adapt. Oh my God, my best client. Adapt. You won't believe what just happened. We're moving. Adapt. You got to learn how to adapt. You got to learn how to adapt. The military teaches you how to adapt in the world of business. You got to learn how to adapt without complaining. Next, survivability. You got to learn how to survive with what you have. 
the world of business, you need to learn how to survive. Next, independence. I learned how to be independent. I think one of my biggest challenges when I talk to young men, uh, especially in America, when I speak to young men, is how dependent they are on their mom and their dad. How dependent they are. Dependent on somebody else to do everything for them. Clothes. You know, wash clothes. Every single thing, they're depending on somebody else to do everything for them. It is not a good thing. It is not a good thing. I'm a big fan of 16, 17, 18 year olds joining the military for a year, two years. If they're undecided on what they want to do with their lives. It'll teach you so much discipline. And even though I joined the U.S. Army, I suggest Air Force because it provides better education as well. And the opportunity for coming out, you do a lot more things, but you can do Navy, Marines, whatever it may be. Right? Independence today is very difficult. Cutting the umbilical cord with mom and kids and all that stuff is so difficult for some people. Military teaches you independence. Next is strategy. Everything's about strategy. You've got to learn what you're going to be doing with strategy. World of business, you need to be strategic. The next point I learned is health. You got to exercise. Why? What are you going to do when you go 36 hours on a shift? What are you going to do? And you're tired. Boom! You're dead. Your unit is dead. Then what? So you're the CEO, you're the entrepreneur. You need to be ready to take your business to the next level. You may be working harder than ever the next year, two years, three years. You're tired. What happens? You're dead. Your business closes down. Why? Because you got tired. Why did you get tired? Because you gained some weight. Why did you gain weight? Because you eat fast food. Why do you eat fast food? Because your excuse is, I'm an entrepreneur. I don't have any time to prepare my food. So you go eat fast food and you put on weight. I don't have time to exercise. That's your excuse. I don't have time to have proper diet. That's your excuse. Instead, you don't need to eat bread. You don't need to eat sweets. You don't need to eat ice cream. Why do you eat those things? That ruins your energy. You can take the steps and walk up instead of taking the escalator. You don't have to take the elevator. You can exercise and get a Fitbit. You can track your exercise routine. This is health. Military is health. Business is health. Next is preparation. Lots of preparation, military. Lots of preparation in the world of business. Then you have paranoia. You learn about paranoia. What's going to happen if we do this? You need a little bit of healthy amount of paranoia. Again, you've heard me talk about this book in at least five of my videos. Andy Grove wrote a book, Only the Paranoid Survive. In the military, paranoia is very, very critical. Very, very critical. In the world of business, paranoia is also very critical. I was just talking to an entrepreneur right now who runs a business doing $20 million per year, and it's doing very, very well. And I pulled him aside. I said, you seem a little too excited. I just want to give you some counsel here and feedback. When you're this excited, this is when you've got to be more paranoid. And he looks at me and says, what do you mean? I said, I said, don't be too fired up and too excited. Be more paranoid. Think tomorrow everything's going to be taken away from you. Be more paranoid. He says, yeah, yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. Be paranoid. You need that in business as well. And then work ethic uh, is the next point. And the last one to me is discipline. If you don't have work ethic, if you don't have discipline, kiss the world of business goodbye. Literally. Just don't go work in as an entrepreneur. If you want to be a millionaire and you're not disciplined, and you don't have work ethic, it's just not going to happen. And if you do get lucky and make the millions, guess what? You're going to lose it all. You're going to lose it all. You don't want to work and make the money and then you lose it all. you got to have a strong work ethic and you got to be disciplined. So, with that being said, um, Dre was his name. Dre, Dre from the Bay. Dre from the Bay. Dre, good request. I'm glad we did this episode. And now you know I'm a big R&B guy. I think I did a video talking about R&B, but now you know what R&B I listen to. Uh, back in the days. And by the way, I'm not a fighter. I'm a lover. This is back in the days when I used to do a lot of foolish things when I was 17, 18 years old. Uh, I can't think of the last time I got into a fight. Um, now my fight is uh, to help inspire as many people around the world as possible to become entrepreneurs. My fight is a whole different fight I got going on right now um, that is still a fight. It just doesn't require these anymore. These have been retired for a long time. So here's what I need you to do. Questions, thoughts, comment on the bottom. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, you know what you got to do. Subscribe to the channel. If you haven't shared any of our videos, please share this video. Tag somebody in whatever post you're watching with anyone you know who's a veteran. Sometimes veterans don't think they can become entrepreneurs, and they have a lot of the qualities to become entrepreneurs. I want to be able to get a lot of veterans, military folks, soldiers who don't know what to do next. They need to watch this video to know they have already possess a lot of the capabilities of being able to become an entrepreneur. They just need to learn how to shift it. So share this video with them. And then what else we got? I think we're at 92,000 subs. Yep. We are this close to 100,000 subs to celebrate this thing together. Thanks to all of you awesome fans, awesome value tainers. 
who do what you do. And I get a lot of private messages recently with you guys telling me, Pat, I got nine more subscribers for you today. I got 10 more subscribers for the channel today. I got eight more subscribers. And we're getting a lot of videos of people becoming great students of this channel. I'm getting emails of how much note-taking is taking place, how specific people are learning and studying. There's a lot of people that watch this content, but I suggest you study this content. It's a big difference. Watching is one-time motivation you forget. Studying is taking notes and processing issues and then going back and looking at it again. I love how great of students people are becoming with the content that we have here. And with that being said, stay tuned with more exciting messages that we have coming up from Harvard here. I can't wait to introduce to you to a, a, a daily experience I've been having here in Harvard, which is going to be fascinating. That'll be launched very soon. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.